Welcome to Nicholas 11x12. Today I'm comparing a total of 6 Intel Core i7 CPUs against each other. Namely the i7-2600K versus the 3770K versus the 4770K versus the 4790K versus the 6700K and versus the 5820K. So there also are a bit dated processors in this comparison here today, but that's something many have requested. In this quick comparison video, we're going to see whether or not it's worth it to upgrade i7 processors of previous generations. To give you a better idea, let's talk about release dates. The 2600K Sandy Bridge was first introduced back in 2011. Its successor, the 3770K Ivy Bridge, was released back in 2012. The 4770K Haswell came out in 2013. The 4790K Devil's Canyon in 2014. The 6700K Skylake in 2015. And last but not least, of the Extreme lineup, the 5820K Haswell E in 2014 again. As for prices, let's ignore these, since several older models are not on sale anymore. Now let's find out how well these dated i7 chips perform against the newer ones once in 2016. Beforehand, I want to let you know that new games such as Far Cry Primal and Rise of the Tomb Raider aren't included in the benchmark since I don't own these games yet. Now let's go! There we go. To most of us, these results may not turn out to be a real surprise, but it definitely shows how well these older i7 chips still do. Sandy Bridge, the 2600K specifically, still does really well even in 2016. Hats off to Intel for doing an amazing job at increasing the frame rates in games just with the CPU alone. And I'm not talking of like 10 FPS over the years, we're often looking at 20 or more, depending on the game. The latest processor, the Skylake 6700K, does an extraordinary good job when it comes to gaming performance. The Haswell E5820K, on the other hand, falls back behind a little in that aspect. But anything that has to do with rendering, the 5820K seems to be taking the crown among the tested i7 CPUs in my list. Another interesting topic is the CPU temperature. We've all heard and many of us have even experienced the legendary overclocking potential of the 2600K Sandy Bridge processor a couple of years ago. It seems Intel has a bit of trouble keeping the temperatures down on every model's successor. That of course is depending on each specific chip, you know the silicon lottery, and not every CPU on the list is soldered up in terms of heat dissipation. With the 3770K Ivy Bridge, Intel for instance went back one step and decided it was a better idea to use TIM instead, thermal paste. The 5820K of the Extreme lineup, however, shows amazing temperature results, thus leading to great overclocking potential and get more performance out of it. But that leads to a higher power draw. In fact, the 5820K consumes the most power of the 6i7 CPUs tested, and that's its stock. But overall, nothing much has changed over the years when it comes to power consumption. Intel clearly focuses on balancing out the power draw and performance gain. The 2600K's age is noticeable once we look at the idle consumption, definitely not as efficient as its successors. So the conclusion here is that it can be well worth to go the upgrade path and go for one of the newer CPUs, that is if you really want the most out of your system. And also the more powerful the graphics card you pair your CPU with, the more noticeable the performance difference in games. But in general, I wouldn't say it's a must to upgrade, not at all. You saw yourselves, even the more dated chips still perform well to this day, and I believe that will continue to be so for some time to come. And then there's always something you can do to squeeze out a bit more 
power, and that is overclock your CPU. And that pretty much wraps this video up. What are your thoughts on this? Let me know. I hope you liked this quick comparison video, and maybe it made your decision on whether or not you should upgrade a little bit easier. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe, and visit my website to sometimes see videos there earlier.